Hey. Hi. How, how are you? How you doing? You I'm can hear me good? good? I can hear you good. Can you hear me? Perfect. We got you. I, I appreciate you for uh, hanging out with us for a bit here. Yes, no problem. I see all my friends and family t uh, tuning in. <laughs> definitely, definitely. We, yes. we, never, we, we, we never actually met before or anything. We never even had a conversation before, so... I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Sonny. Hi, Sonny. I, I heard about you today. You heard about me today? Yeah, Hollywood Haitian. Okay, that's my guy. Yeah, that's like my childhood friend. Best really? Friend. Really, that's my guy right there. That's my guy right yeah, there. We, we used to dance together growing up. Right, okay. Okay, yeah. where, where are you from? Where are you from exactly? Well, um, my name is Tamara Wilkinson Ivy. I'm from Vanderveer. Right. Yes, Vanderveer, uh, front page and Brooklyn Ave side. Got you, got you. Yes. And um, where'd you go to school at in that area? I went to 269 for a little while, 135, uh, 236 in Mill Basin. Got you. Yeah, so Thank I went you. to all the, the schools out in by King's Plaza. I went to Roy H. Man. I went to Canarsie. Right, right. Well, I, I knew from like Canarsie on, and one thing I just want to tell the people and tell you is that you always show us love, right? And yeah. you, always, you always hit us like, yo, dope job or whatever, but it's always like, yo, she's, she knows people somewhere, somehow. So, you know, we do research. That's what we do as a doctor, you know. So I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> She, she's really, really humble. She's really, really humble. She's kind of a big deal. Like, she, we get people all the time that hit us, yo, oh, this is me, I'm from such and such, I do such and such, you total opposite, and you, you, you're super amazing and dope. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, T. Yes, um, yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. I mean, I read Brooklyn. My dad is, a, he was a, a politician. And you you making me get all emotional and whatnot. This is so sweet, you know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you know, like I did a lot of things in Brooklyn growing up. I was a, a professional dancer. I was a model. I went to acting school. Um, Mike from Mike from The Wire was my right. first choreographer. Right, because he used to dance as well, correct? Yes, yes. So let's you, you kind of sped through it there. I'm not gonna let you do that because I want I want to really celebrate different steps here, figure out some things here, learn some things. Okay. So you went to Canarsie, you say, right? And then there it says, you know, you, you won a, a pageant, correct? Yeah, um, 1991, I won Miss African American, 1992, I won Miss African American Talented Team. Talented and, Team. Yes, and that was like during the Hal Jackson era, you know, right. when he was doing the Talented Team. So this brother out of Brooklyn, his name is Derek Dawson. He's also Safari's godfather. Okay. So, and we, we always used to, you know, go to the Flatbush YMCA, you know, and we were always there all the time. And we practiced there all the time. Uh, Patrick, Hollywood Haitian, he was, you know, always like just there because his girlfriend was in the pageant. Okay. So, <laughs> so he grew up with us and always dancing and being the guy, just like helping us out and stuff like that, you know. But big shout out to Ace. He's actually how we connected, you know, reconnected. Uh, okay. To interview. Right. Ace is, yes. I, Ace is my guy. Definitely big shout out to Ace, man. Definitely. Ace is always very supportive. Ace is always, you know, he let, he yes. let us know if we slipping. He let us know when we're doing good. You need good brothers like Ace around always. Exactly. A great representation. And, you know, what he's been through to live to tell his story is like, yeah, but the testimony is what really, you know, what we go through in life is what really what makes us, you know? Right. Um, it says, All right, so I'm going to let you do your thing. No, we have a conversation. This is not it's no <laughs> interview, especially because we never had a conversation before. Uh, you know, yes. it's regular. This is just organic stuff here. Um, yeah. The thing, you said talent pageant. I don't want to just say pageant. So what were some of the talents that you was dealing with? So for me, my talent was singing. That, that was something that I used to love to do. Okay. Um, but I also helped some of the girls in the pageant write their monologue. So that was some, I used to write a lot of scripts. And I just did it because I was in uh, performing arts. That was the program I was in, in Roy H. Mann and Canarsie. So when I was in Canarsie, I was in Broadway theater. 
Um, and uh, it was a theater program in Canarsie. So basically what they would do is take the students to Broadway to go see all the plays for free. Mm. So, yeah, so we were able to see Cats, Les Miserables, everything. All the, like every year we would go see, well, we really like to see Cats because of the dancing and all of that. Right. But, you know, you're taking hood kids to Broadway for free. That's great exposure. You know? Yeah, and, and um, this is right in our neighborhood. Right. All of the, everything that I've ever done in my life, I've got it from Flatbush. From Flatbush, that's what's up. So And all the all the free programs, everything. So Beacon, I'm sure you heard of Beacon before. Of so Beacon, I used to go there with my cousin. Shout out to Dawn Monroe. She's a rapper. And my cousin, Carlene, I know she's looking. Um, they We used to go there as kids, and then... Um, you know, we took modern dancing there, and that's what opened us to go into the city and doing modern dancing at a uh, Broadway Dance Center. But we, again, we was with the free program, so right. we, you know, Broadway Dance Center, you had to have a scholarship to go there. Right. Uh, so they took us, the inner city kids. It's like you know, city kids and all that fresh air fun and everything. Yep. But Beacon just was Beacon. It didn't really have that kind of name. So um, with Beacon came like summer youth. I took I took advantage of that too. Wow. Um, I, I worked at WBLS for some years as a teenager. I was about to say this is in the same time frame. Yes. So like every so when I won the pageant, um, uh, I'm jumping off. But when I won the pageant, I sang, and you know somebody stole, stole my tape, <laughs> and I had to sing a cappella. <laughs> So wow. Derek was, Derek was, I almost dropped out the pageant the night before and Derek was like, you're not dropping out. So I guess he already knew, you know, that I was going to win, but I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So um, they was like, you're not dropping out. And I was like, how y'all going to lose my tape? Like, oh my God, like, this is crazy. So I came out, I came out on stage and I was talking to the crowd. I was like, listen, y'all going to have to sing with me. So <laughs> I said, they lost my tape. I was 14. Did you so you rocked was at, it? This was at um, New York Tech High School. So this is, the one, this, this is the one you won, correct? Yeah. So you had to go acapella. Well, wait a minute. You had to go acapella. You had to get crowd participation, right? You had to sing and do your thing pretty upset and furious, right? <laughs> it, it seemed like you got a, a, a whole handful of lessons in one night. Yeah. That's dope. At a very young age, you know. Right. And I was I was 14, you know, and you, like wow. I said, I'm from, I'm from Vanderveer. So you could be you could just imagine what I was exposed to around that time. Right. Did that give you did that give you some of your resilience, some of your tough fortitude? Did that help with that? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I remember one time growing up on front page, I was like real young and um, I was like on my unicycle through the hallway. You know, every you know your parents don't let you go outside, so you gotta play in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're in the hallway, and I opened the door, and it was like a, a dead body there. This is on front page. Okay. My new of, of course. Yeah. So the, we lived on the second floor, and I, I I didn't even flinch. I just ran back. That like I was on the unicycle, and I just ra ran back inside. Like you know, ah. okay. <laughs> And wow. I was like, Mom, there's a dead body in the um, elevator. She just grabbed us all together, and we went to my grandmother's house on New York Avenue. And that's how I met, like, the Dika. You know Dika, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah, so she was like she was like my street mom, you know? So okay. She, yeah, so we all modeled together in the neighborhood and everything. We used to model for Rashadi. And any neighborhood designer, but Rashadi was, like, real hot because he was Jamaican. So everybody wanted to model for him. So anybody who was any and everybody modeled for Rashadi. So we all did that, you know? Wow. Yeah. So, I, so, this, so, this is, so this is early. Resilience, exposure. Like at, at 14, that experience probably could have, that probably helped boost. Because that's at an age where, you know, you're pretty fragile sometimes inside, going through a lot inside. So I can only yeah. imagine, you know, what yeah. that was like. Yeah. All right. From there, you go to charm school. I see something about charm school here. So within the when, once I won the pageant, that was one of the winnings to go to charm school for nine months. So you got a nine month contract, and the charm school I went to was um, Ophelia DeVore Modeling Charm School, and it was the only black owned charm school in New York City in the Empire State Building. Wow. 
So once I was, I was going there and I was going to the uh, Actors Theater's workshop at the same time. So I was taking Shakespearean Theater over there by FIT mm -hmm. and then would leave there and then go to uh, Charm School to learn how to walk, learn how to sit, learn how to talk. I was about to say, what do you learn in Charm School? Like, what's some of the, those you learn how to walk. Yeah, you learn how to walk, talk, sit, uh, everything. Everything as far as presence uh, is concerned. So James Earl Jones went there. Cicely Tyson went there. Uh, up, Mary up yeah, you you good. You you know oh, yeah, okay. straight. Definitely. You know, but you you you're you're an editor, so you're back and forth between you know. I'm looking class. around, right? So so I, I was going to ask you that. I didn't know if it was a crazy question, but I'm glad you said it. So with, with guys, guys go to charm school as well. Yes, absolutely. Actually, um, when I was in charm school, there was a girl, she's from Vanderbilt too. Her sister, they used to hang out with the VIP crew, um, Laura Jean and Juliet. So Juliet and I, Juliet went to the uh, agency of my charm school. So okay. the agency was Grace Del Marco. So what Grace Del Marco, they put out tons of all the African-American models that you saw. Grace Del Marco had all those models. Grace Del Marco. Yes. Right. And they was a subsidiary of Ophelia DeVore. Wow. I got definitely you definitely got me doing some homework. I got, I got some homework to do. Here. Yeah, that's that's some that's some old school, you know. Got you, I, got you. <laughs> I got you, I got you. Yes, yes. So what are some of the things that guys learn? Like give me help me become a better gentleman. You got you know, um how to walk, how to you know, all of that. No smoking, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no smoking on interviews, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's you know, it's it depends on the interview. If it, 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 it this is your thing, but you're asking, right? I'm so, asking. You know, yeah, this is your platform, so you can do whatever you want. But you know, in in time school, they teach you things like you know the proper way to actually be in a forum. You know, just just your presence, always be aware, proper body language, always listening skills and things like that and then obviously um utensils how to use utensils you know going out and going out to eat a lot of times we, you know a lot of people don't know that you know they don't know even though you grew up in a home where your mom and your dad they, they put a knife and a fork on the table you still don't know your salad fork you know your dessert spoon your coffee spoon and things like that so you learn a lot of those things and you you know they gave us a pamphlet and and, and a whole program there was a, another girl named, from, named Tamara from Brooklyn. They were torn between us graduating, um, that we were so talented. We both won most talented upon graduation of Charm School. At Charm School, wow. Yeah, but she didn't end up going on. I ended up, they asked me to stay on until I was like 21. Is that is that typical? Like, what's the age that, is, can you go how old? As soon as your contract was over, that was it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's, that's so I awesome. ended up, yeah, I, I ended up also being featured. Ophelia DeVore, she had, um, being that when you have these platforms, like podcasts and things like that, even back then, um, the, you know, the uh, BCAT, MNN, and all those right. channels. So she had a show on uh, the Manhattan Neighborhood Network back then, and it was over on 50-something Street. So I sang on that show. I was a guest on her show. I opened up um, for Wendy Williams at... Uh, Sweet waters. I this is like, still hey. at this. This is still at this time, right? Yes. Wow, you you yes. busy. Yes. <laughs> so this is all going into you know how I got to Fubu. Gotcha. So when I well, I was about to say I was about to go there. I was about to go there. Yeah. Um, so as as I'm at the as I'm at the um actual uh acting school, I you know I got a flyer downstairs in the the lobby to, to go to. Uh, FIT's casting for their annual fashion show or something like that. So I get there and then um, I'm like, first of all, I was always like small in shape. So, uh, you know, I'm going to stop being like, you know, all professional. We're going to talk like I'm from there or whatever. Okay? okay. So, you know, I always modeled. I always was, you know, one of the girls that always, you know, we were always just fly. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and it's not like, it's not like I'm just, you know, I'm saying that now on the show. It's like, it's just something that, you know, everybody from Flatbush, we all thought that way. You know what I'm saying? You, you rang with your crew, you guys, you know, who had the hottest this, who had the flyest that, who was fresh. So this is all tying into why I worked in fashion. 
you know, because a lot of the times back then it was all about name brand and it was, you know, it still kind of is, right? Right. But I was one of the girls that always was like, I'm going to get something real cheap and I'm going to put it together because I know I, I look good. So, you know, <laughs> me and my girls, we look good. So, you know, whatever. We was into hair, we was into makeup and through charm school, they teach you things like that too. They teach you to do your hair and makeup while you're at a fashion show. So I learned that at like 15, like you better have your hair and makeup and with lashes on. Okay. Right. Exactly. And the gentleman should have, you know, how to tie his own tie, you know, things like that. The right, you know, lapel, the, 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 the actual napkin that sits into the you. Square guys. pocket square. You yeah, have things like you that. Have you have that. Have you you gotta be right. Basic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And things you could get in the hood. Right. You know, and, and a lot of the times, yeah, a lot of the times we don't take advantage of what the hood has to offer. Yes, there's, you know, robbing, stealing, killing, gangs, all of that, you know, but what you really want to do, you know, like what did you, what you want to take from what's happening now, you know, right now, today, like I'm going I'm to say what's happening now. It feels like when I was living in Vanderveer, you mm. know, like in the 80s, right. you understand? I wasn't even out, even though we were already in a 77 days of a pandemic, right? Well, now we have all this crime going on. Right. This is like the L.A. riots during Rodney King era. But it's everywhere this time. It's, it's everywhere, you know? But for me, I was in New York at that time. So I remember even in New York, they were like, do not go outside. Right. <laughs> right. You know? So, yeah. So, um, you know, um, going to the, the, the actual audition... I met Kiki Kianga Peterson and Jay, the one of the owners from FUBU, and Kianga Peterson. She was one of the designers, and mm. the, the great thing about them is that when they saw me initially, they were like, "Okay, that's that's FUBU ladies." So I became the fit model for FUBU ladies for many years. So ninety three, ninety four, they came out in ninety two. Mm. So ninety. 94, 95, 96, 97, I was the fit model. So everything FUBU ladies was fit on me first. How, how much pressure? Okay, when you say, I'm about to say, when you say fit model, you mean to fit on you first, or does that mean like? To, to use my fit and then produce the product in my fit later on and sell in stores to everyone across the world. Oh, oh, that just threw me off. So I'm thinking, I was thinking something totally different. Like I had a whole yeah. another way I was thinking with that. But time out. So that's the fit model. So pretty much your body was like the quote unquote the prototype. Yes. Wow. Yes. Is that yes. is that a lot of how many years was that? Ninety three, four, five. And it was off and on because I was still in high school. Okay. And Kiki and Jay would call me in, like, we just got some product in and you know, we just want to see how it fit. So Kiki, you know, she um she actually was on our the Ashley TV live show, one of our first segments. And she mentioned, you know, I never really knew that it was, I knew I was a fit model, but I didn't know it was because of my shape that that's what she really wanted for FUBU ladies. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So with that, um, I used to model for this group called, and I'm like 17, 18, you know? So okay. through the pageant, I'm still with the, I'm still with the, the, the charm school. I was about to say, that's till 21. So you're 17, yeah. so you're still juggling. Yeah, so the charm school is sending me on like, um, Go sees for clockers, go see for Bronx Tail, go sees for everything, everything, anything you could think of. I was a part of it. So, yeah, like, somebody like, just said in the comments that something about Bronx Tail, somebody said it was, a, it, was a couple, it was a while back, but they did say something about Bronx Tail. Yeah, so Terrell Hicks, myself, I can only remember me and Terrell were the only two people at um, the Tribeca office auditioning for it. We both had the same hairstyle, but they was like, okay, she's not, she's not, she don't look black enough so <laughs> you know but did she so, hold up golden question though did she have the fit that she was she well she didn't have the she had the fit because she was tall you know oh, and she, oh, okay she, and she always had a nice body you know what okay. i'm saying she was beautiful too but she wasn't she i wasn't the prototype for that you understand Ooh. what i'm saying so, okay. so what that taught me you know was to always not just give up you know what i'm saying like Yes, it's a big break, but you got to keep going and, and fit in your lane what works for you, you yeah. know? And I had to build that early, 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 you know? Because I was around Aaliyah, everybody, very young. I'm talking about, you know, I was in Hot Like Fire. I did a lot of videos. That's, um, so that came, did the, did the music come 
after the food or was you juggling that at the same time? All of that at the same time. All of oh, that. Wow. I was, so, so I was doing were, so much at the same time. So these were two years. So two the fit mile times and meeting different people and networking, you started branching out. Of course, you were already into singing and performing and cats, the exposure to these once different... I Let me tell you something. Once I won the pageant, I was like, I want to dance. I want to be a professional dancer. <laughs> like, I was over. I was over singing because I choreographed the pageant. That you talking about the pageant from fourteen? Yes. Yes, yes, that's salute. Yeah, so I, I once I, I was I was like, listen, you could do so much more behind the scenes. Like you would get more respect behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. when I was young, I was like, I you know, I like being in the front, I like being in the forefront and all that, but I have a brain. You know what I'm saying? I know how to write scripts, I know how to direct shows. I work with people who do the same thing now, you know, so it's not like, you know, you work, you're taking the pressure all by yourself. You're finding your lane, your niche, and you're staying in that area and you're helping with the production, but it's not like, you know, you're fighting to be the overseer of the production. You see what I'm saying? Gotcha. So, got yeah. Well, so before we even get to the music, it, so obviously this was something you had to focus on was getting to the top. So you had to focus on, you was focused. So well, I was I was more focused on having a job because, like I said, I had a I was an artist, right. and then I, I I worked in summer youth, so I had a taste of being an artist. I was the my like I was I don't know how old maybe I was an eight or ten. My first pageant, New York State preteen. I was yeah. young doing this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I've I've been I traveled the world with my parents. You know, like they they would you know take off from work and drive me around and. My mom, every weekend, she would come with me to the city and stuff. The weekend that I went for the audition, though, uh, I wasn't with her. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the uh, FIT and, you know, I fix my hair. And You're going to show up. <laughs> I was like, I'm getting this. Fix that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you got it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything, everything seems so, like, just, just lined up. Yes. And you... At these times, at these, at this point, up until this point, like how many failures and like how many kick in the face did you have? A lot, a lot. Like um, there was so many. It was, it was, it was, it was countless kicks in the face, and then it was like, oh, sh you about to do this, that, and the third. Like, <laughs> you know, your hair poster is all over up and down Flatbush. Girls is getting wet and wavy braids or weed because of you. You know what I'm saying? So how you for years. Wait? Don't, don't, listen, we're here to celebrate all of that. I didn't have that in my <laughs> notes. Don't try to fly. That's big right there. What you mean, girls had the wet and wavy because of you? Yes. I used to, I used to do a lot of hair modeling too. Gotcha. And um, there was a hair magazine out in Flappers called Hair Accents Magazine. Um, and pretty much a lot of women in my family do hair and makeup and all of that. So my, um, my sister, she used to braid my hair with these like micro braids. So I wanted it just like Tony Braxton with the little blonde pieces and all of that and right. Janet Jackson. So I went and got the braids. We used to go to Lugos. Every chick in Brooklyn, every Flatbush chick in Brooklyn went to Lugos, okay? And Lugos was like the new, what we, what we do now with the lace wigs and all of that. So Lugos, you know, every Bashment girl, Flatbush girl, people was coming from all over the world going to Snyder and Flatbush trying to buy this hair. Wow. So my mother, my mother, she's Grenadian, so is my dad. So my mom, she was like, you would consider her more, She, even though they worked in politics, she liked to be a socialite. So she went to all the Grenadian parties, every Grenadian party you could think of in Flatbush. She didn't really shop for clothing in Flatbush. She shopped at like Petit Patan, Le Passe, all those stores that are now in Brooklyn. They were in the village. So in the 80s, we was leaving Vanderveer going all the way to the village in the heat for her to go to like the limelight, palladium. Right. The the yes. Wow. Yeah. So, I, 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 <laughs> so, wow. so wait, wait, while we on hair though, what, what would you say like, like I heard you say, you know, you had to get certain kind of preps for charm school and different things like that. How much of being from Flatbush and just that fly just being in you, how much of that was like, like, Talk about that Flatbush fly, because Flatbush women are like, some, you know, like none other. I know, I know. Said, I <laughs> Thank know. you. <laughs> <laughs> listen, we, listen, I've always, one thing I've 
always said, like growing up in the projects, it was like one of the most amazing things for me because I, I learned myself growing up. Because you, your mom, she want to protect you. She want to keep you in the house. So what can you do, you know, outside of playing? I stopped watching cartoons at eight. I was grown, you know, like I was, I was doing my hair. I was sitting with her in the nail salon, you know, like I was always up under her. So I wanted to learn hair and makeup. Uh, my cousins, their mom was a hair, a big hairdresser in Flatbush like at Sheer Perfection. That's you the know, spot. Like, yeah, yeah, that's the spot. You know, you know, all the hot girls was in there getting their hair done. I right. mean, like, you know, the chicks from the hair salon was in the guy video. I mean, like, this is the scene that I was on. So if these were my images and these are the women that I looked up to, you know, Deke, uh, uh, all these other women, you know what I'm saying? Um, Linda, Yvette Michelle, I used to dance with Yvette Michelle. She's not from Flatbush, but, you know, like even her as a celebrity at the time when she was um, on, had her, her single out with Funkmaster Flex, you know, she would come from the Bronx in her limo to pick me up in there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's a lot of limos coming through Veer through the years, it sounds like. every Yeah. Definitely. Wow. Yeah. I was going to ask you, um, I'm glad you mentioned some of the other sisters because, you know, we, I talked to a lot of the fellas, and, we, you know, we talk about the OGs and, who you know, people like OGs like Ace and Good Brothers that, you know. So what about with women? Like, who, like, you just named some good sisters. Were those your peers, or did you have women in the community that you had to look to? So, like, Laura Jean... Laura Jean, Zanetta, Shelly Ann, Charlene. Charlene, I think she works for Jay-Z. She went mm. to St. Jerome. Shaka, mm. she went to St. Jerome. They from Newkirk Ave. And mm. I, knew, I grew up with those girls in St. Jerome. So that's another thing how I got in the industry. You know, working at, I like, like I said, I was in the industry because of Flatbush. Like, everybody, and then once they knew you was from Flatbush, it's like, oh, we got you. This, you yeah. know, like, there was no... There was no hustle and bustle, no tussle, none of that. You know what I'm saying? Because you had Jimmy Henson from Flatbush. You had him from that. You know, <laughs> you, had, you had Bryce. You know what I'm saying? You had Mike. You know? <laughs> My, you know, you had Ace. You had Ilya. You had a ton of psycho. I mean, come on. Yes, The definitely. list goes on and on. But for females... For me, you know, it was like Jackie, Carol. These are like my mother's friends. Carol, she had long dreads. Her mm. son is Dreddy Dunn. Um, her other son was Jamel. He died in Vanderveer when we were kids from an asthma attack. Um, and, you know, Vanderveer mm. just taught, taught me so much. Fashion, people, bashment parties, this, that. I mean, like, I took all of that and, and, and you know, molded it in, and morphed it into, you know, what I am today. You know what I'm saying? Right, that's um, uh, a lot of things I don't let go, you know, because I think that to me, that's just the, the, the icing on the cake, you know, the sure. sauce, sure. you know, and I grew up around people who was into fashion, you know, I grew up around people who set trends, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, like I was telling a friend of mine the other day, I was like, you're the first one with the cookie booth, the, you know, like the, the whole Columbia jacket style, the guess this, you know, Ace and STP was flagging before you know, that thing was even popular, you know? Right. So it's like, for, 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 I mean, as a fashion statement. Talk about you it. You know what I'm saying? So now you, you, you take everybody's style and you t and, and people go and have these jobs in, in corporate, they don't really talk about where they're from and, you know, what really drove them to be who they are, you know? Like, for example, Atiba Newsom, he is, uh, he's from Brooklyn, he's from Flatbush, he's from Brownsville, but he's also Diddy stylist for many years. You mm. understand? So a lot of people from Flatbush, like myself, we, you know, at the, at, at the same time, you don't want to starve. You don't want to be a starving artist. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to have a reality. And, and sometimes and... as an artist, you can't get over that hump like you nev you're never going to be a star. Right. So that's why I said, you know what? For me, I need to, you know, reset and reinvent. And that's how I got into, you know, when in 97, 98, I was already uh, dancing and stuff like that. But I got the opportunity to work at FUBU Ladies. So once I started working at FUBU Ladies and I got a taste of working in corporate, I was like, oh, I never dancing again, singing again. But you was already, that. but you was already, like you said, you knew you wanted to kind of you know, juggle the industry and juggle life in general. So yeah, that but was you perfect. know, 
yeah but you know the, it was it was more than perfect just to have the job but it was more than perfect because it was the right time you know and it was the right brand you know what i'm saying mm. um and we needed that you know a lot of the times a lot of you know brands that come out and that came out back then they, they didn't really have the longevity that fubu had not at all, you know? not at all. And, and till this day you know what i'm saying so I'm grateful for that. So that mindset stuck with me to wanting to keep a job, you know, in corporate. So even though I toured for 10 years in between that career, I still always said I'm going to settle down and have a job because what I'm doing now, I'm too grateful for it every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I would never want to, you know, not have a job doing what I'm doing with Ashley Stewart, you right. know, and experiencing all of the things that I've done throughout my life, you know? So for the fashion of Vanderveer and, and the style of fashion in Flatbush, rather, um, you know, that's how, that's who I am. I'm a Brooklyn girl, you know? Um, Ashley Stewart was born in Brooklyn, too, in 1991. Really? So, yeah. Yeah, the first store was on Fulton Street. My mother, she was a customer. Um, they used to call her the diva. So I spent time in that store. I grew up in that store. So I watched my mom shop frugally and make sure she fed us as a single parent and still how you look had, fly. How you had time to how you had time to be in Ashley Stewart on tour? Yo, you yo, you I'm a community kid. I'm a community kid. Like I, I, I keep advantage. Like I go to Aknak, you know, things like that. You but, know, I'm a regular regular chick but I, you know like, like you're not regular t i'm like listen <laughs> i'm regular i'm i'm as chill as it can get but you know i've done some great things i'm grateful what is what's some of the what's some of the things like what, what's one thing that sticks out in your head that's that you're proud of a lot of it you earned so i'm sure you've seen it coming but something it has to be something that just like whoa just caught you off guard like wow well it's i don't know it's and <laughs> so many things but i remember when i um i used to dance and um at first it was like you know in the united states and you know it was little gigs here and there but when i first when i graduated from high school i went to germany the one thing that really um stuck with me throughout my life was having an abundance of passport mm. traveling you understand mm. so i didn't have to wait to have a job to take a vacation and pay for these elaborate trips that you know I would never be able to afford going to the Congo, going to Kinsa, you know, uh, Nigeria, all these different places as a backup dancer for, for all these different reggae artists like that. I would have never have traded that in. I like being on the corporate side, trust me, but you know, that living that life, I had so much fun. You know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't trade it in for the world. So I'm yeah. really proud of, you know, the step that I took, you know, to say, you know what, I'm going to do this in my, early 20s and then you know i stopped at like 27 and then i came back home and that's when i from atlanta and that's when i started working back in new york right and at, at ashley stewart you're the well you're, we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna do it we're gonna time warp we're gonna go back so let's go back party. okay let's, let's go back then. let's go back right i wanted to touch on you i know you have like done work with people like Aaliyah, will smith um, yes. Aretha Franklin. Like I don't know even what that's about. So let's talk, let's, let's that. talk about Aretha because Aretha shot her video that I did. Um, Here we go again. It was produced by Jermaine Dupri. They shot it at Tilden Ballroom. <laughs> Flat Bush, stand up. Yes. So I always was used to having car service pick me up, go to the set, blah blah blah. So they were like, "Oh, it's at Tilden Ballroom." I was like, "Oh, I could walk there." They was like. <laughs> And, and you know she's Aretha Franklin. She's on a big label. They was like, no, no, no. We'll pay for car service. I was like, it's a seven dollar cab from my house. I will walk. So I walked from there to Tilden and New York Ave, and sat down. Me, my girlfriend Leslie. She's also she's from Brooklyn Ave. She's not from there, but she's from Flatbush. Right. She's also my dance partner, and um, she was in the video. And she was in. She's also uh, w one of the lead singers in Electric Red. So we were young girls, you know what I'm saying? Six, 16, 17, 18, working together in Flatbush. You see what I'm saying? Going to Germany, coming back home. Going to Paris, coming back home. Yeah, you that's know? dope. That's dope. Yeah. So, so what, what about like 
it's Ron Isley, Sean Paul. Okay. He's a, so he's let's like talk, different so talk about genres. Huh? So let's talk about video. Let's talk about so, video. Okay, so I also was on Teen Summit I, when I used to dance with Yvette Michelle. She, um, everybody, I'm not going to sing no songs, okay? Look up Yvette Michelle. I was going to ask. <laughs> I was going to ask. <laughs> Funk Master Flex was the her producer. So you talking about when this is early days when DJs started getting the artist thing and they started putting out artists. So she was his artist. And then oh. DJ Clue, I danced with DJ Clue too. So this is, I'm talking about the very first DJ Clue mixtape, mix CD. Wow. So I went to Germany with him, Case, and Yvette Michelle. And then um, after that, we came home. We did some videos. I was in Space Jams. I was in Hot Like Fire with Aaliyah. Um, I was in, when I, the day I graduated from high school, the very same day, I came home and Andrew Ferguson, um, what's his name? Uh, Solange husband, ex-husband husband. husband. Right. Uh, he, was the, he was the director of that video. So he called my mom and was like, your daughter auditioned and we're going to send car service and we want her to dress herself, do her own makeup. She's flawless the way she is. I was so happy. I get to the set and the stylist was like, no, you got to change your clothes. You got to put on more makeup. And she wanted to put me in a thong. And this is Sonia Majette. So it's so funny. Sonia's from Flatbush. So Sonia goes, honey, you got to put on a thong. So she wants to put me in this like $300 thong from um, Pink Pussycat. I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I'm wearing this because they wanted, I was the cake girl coming out of the cake. Little Kim was the, you know, the rapper coming out talking to um, Ron Isley. Wow. Yeah, so I was the cake girl, and you know, like I said, you know, I was back then. I was very into my physique. But you didn't. But that. you didn't go. But you didn't. You didn't throw in a three hundred dollar thong. No, I have my 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 clothes that was custom made for me. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> like like I said, this is this is what we're going to talk about. The difference but, between the 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 difference between the expensive and what's customly made, and what you make look good for you. And. And that's the difference between somebody that just kind of walked on and somebody that was actually a fit model, the prototype. Right, right, exactly. So, so right, you know, that's wow. So having Andrew, Andrew call my mom and telling my mom, like, you know, that was a big deal for me. You know what I'm saying? We shot it. that video at the Metronome. So you're talking about Diddy's first days, Biggie's first, everybody's first days. Wow. So it's like and, 90, it's like 93, 94. To, yeah, I was very close to a lot of people from Bed Stuy because my cousins, they were Grenadian, but they lived in Bed Stuy. Right. Shout out to Kathy. I see you, boo. So they um, you know, they were the only Grenadians in Bed Stuy at that time. So we, you know, we were always around them, but they they looked like Jamaicans. At that time, everybody was dressing with the linen and the this and the, the right. pasta, pasta, <laughs> you know. So they looked like that and they was into DJing. So, you know. I was over there a lot. So I met um, Un Justice Un's brother from Entertainment, uh, Justice Rivera, and we became very good friends. And he was the one who started putting me in uh, working with like Aaliyah videos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So then he introduced me to another producer, a, a film producer, and then I started doing like extra work on Clockers and some other stuff throughout Brooklyn. Like, the movie stuff, I don't really remember because that I was doing for a check. So, like, once I saw how quick I could make money on right. that, I was in high school. So, I was like, oh. <laughs> right. Like, I'm sitting at, I'm going on set on Saturday. I'm at home. My check is in the mail. You know? Like, I was happy. Yes. You had, yeah, you had a right to be. I also did um, Little John and Get Low. So, I was the barbershop girl in that. Right. I was going to ask you. I see that. So, now... Everybody's, you know, a lot of people don't know this, so I'm going to set it here, the record straight. So Get Low, you know, if you notice the Get Low, um, it's Get Low, but, you know, the, the girls are moving, the way they're dancing, you know, the girls down south, they do a different Get Low. Right. West Indian girls, we go low and we do it, you know. Right, right. Talk <laughs> about it. Talk about it. Right. So I took that style and Little John was like her. She's going to be the barbershop girl. I have my own scene. Like, I didn't have to, you know, be risque or nothing. 
You know what I'm saying? And Little Duval was in the scene with me, um, the Ying Yang twins. So I was the opening scene for that. So I did getting jiggy with it. You know, I did, I did a lot of videos and things like that growing up, but it was the tour life that really, um, for 10 years, that was what I was really doing. Well, you, you said you said you didn't have to really get risque, and then before you said you didn't I, have to... Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I was the well, barbershop girl, so I didn't have to wear pom pom shorts and, you know, little bras and stuff. Like, I still look sexy in the barbershop outfit. You know what well, I'm saying? Because... Well, let me ask you this. If you, you, I remember the, the thongs, you didn't put the thong on, you had your custom situation going on. So what is it, what, you, what do you think that it was that separated you from that, like, as far as being happy? I was very risque? stern with myself. Gotcha. Very stern. And I was like, you know, I already have a body. I don't need to do all of that. Like, I don't need to, you know, the game was changing. The industry was changing. Like, there was girls, they was coming to New York from other other cities, other states, other countries. The music game was changing. They was getting more, the girls was getting more exotic. People was getting more plastic surgery done. And I was like, I'm natural. I'm not doing all of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from Flatbush. And where we from, this is where the girls look like. Right. I, I respect know? it. I, I respect it. I'm, I'm, proud. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Word. Um, <laughs> like, let's, uh, wow, where, where do you even go? Um, so how did you how did you get to Ashley Stewart from this point? You come, you come back, you settle down. Is that when that transition happened or? Yeah, so once I, so Ed Hardy was like fading out, you know what I'm saying? So I was there for a little while, but I was in the retail shops. But once I got in the shops, I became the sales generation manager. And then I became the area training manager for sales generation, visual, op, visual merchandising and operations. So I was that manager for all the stores in New York City and Jersey and Woodbury Commons. So I took that and I said, well, I got this experience, so I know I'm going about to get a, a job in corporate. And I just changed up my resume, and I found it more, I, I designed it more suitable to target a job in um, corporate. So I got recruited off of LinkedIn from the Ashley Stewart recruiter, and I got the job. Wow. That's it. it. That's the job you have now is you manager of customer in acquisition is that what you is that, yeah. that saying right uh, i'm one of the marketing managers uh but i'm also the manager of customer acquisition and what that is right. is obviously being friends with the girls or the women that we're ashley stewart and you know partnering with the community being the face of the brand and speaking on our philanthropic efforts um partnering with any influencers on the brand any brand ambassadors brand advocates i speak on behalf of the brand everywhere um, besides my CEO and my, my executive team, but they chose to put black women at the forefront um, of the table, you know, um, and that's very important for people to know, especially at a time like now. Uh, my job, I've been there for eight years, eight years this year, and um, I love my job. Like, I don't see, I don't understand, you know. <laughs> I don't understand what it's like to not be at a place like Ashley Stewart, you know, where the, where the people are family oriented, they care about you and they understand, you know, your, your, your work life balance. For me, you know, for me being there for eight years, that says a lot. Right. There's women that have been there 21 years. The brand is 28 years. What, what's, what's the, what's the demographic of the Ashley Stewart, um, customer, like uh, well, our, our brick and mortar, she skews more African American and less Caucasian. But on ecom, our Caucasian customer, she's holding that race strong. Right. Okay. Okay. She's coming from probably the middle of the country. She's shopping. She's from coming home. from everywhere. She's she she's her girlfriend is a friend to the brand. Her sister in law, something like that. You know, or she's a customer and she heard about the brand or whatever the whatever the case may be. But she is, she's she's a mother. She's a a, a regular person, regardless of her being Caucasian or black. You right, know that's what I'm a saying? fact. That's a fact. But she does skew heavier on ecom, which is which is great, and we love the fact that she's buying because we have fly clothes to you know give her, and we want her to look good too. So, right. <laughs> we mean, want her. To, we want her to shop online. Definitely. That's that's the that's the way. Um, yes. I mean, with, with you on their team, I mean, this might be a silly question, but 
Who's the competition? The competition? I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm just asking. I really there's don't know. Brands, so. There's other brands out there. I got you. But, you know, nobody does what we do. I mean, honestly, though, I don't know, like, that I always gonna, see the store. Gonna... I know the store placement everywhere. I see them all the time. Since, like you said, downtown Flatbush. Yeah. But I just, I just, I just really never knew. But I, I never so I'm gonna, they I'm stood gonna alone. So I'm gonna tell you. So in 2013, we were facing bankruptcy. Um, my CEO stepped down from his seat at, uh, at uh, on the board and took a CEO position to be in house at Ashley Stewart and revamp the brand. The burn was treated very poorly for the past, at the time, 26, 25 years. So he took it upon himself, Asian man, okay, that's from New York City, though. He's from Long Island. Um, and even though he, he went to Harvard and all that, but he's, he's, you know, I know a lot of people that went to Harvard, okay? And they still hood. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, it, it is what it is. But he, he didn't have to do that. I know a lot of CEOs that, you know, I work with the best of the best. I'm not knocking anybody hustle, but he didn't have to leave his kids and his family in Boston to stay at Ashley Stewart and help revamp and restructurize us numbers wise so that way we could understand the business better. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, for myself, I was in a position, I was an assistant buyer at the time. I was on the merchandising team. So for me, I wanted to stay with the company. I didn't want to leave the company. So he said, you know, what do you want to do? And I told him about my path. And he said, okay, well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. That man went, revamped the company. You know, I became the marketing associate. You know, I did my job. I, I sat there. I didn't care what it was. I knew I still wanted to be in corporate. Mm. And I wanted to work there. There was nowhere else I wanted to work. There was nowhere else that I saw, you know, that I wanted to work. They, they made sure that we employ almost a thousand African-American people women in this in the stores wow. people there, there are men that work there but majority of our employee d database is women african-american women black women that's commendable okay martin luther king weekend we donate uh, a percentage of our sales to charities across the united states we have 88 stores in 22 different cities so what we do is we take back, we take money from our sales and we give to our community. When we have Love Your Curves, Finding Ashley Stewart that we recently had to put on course, those customers win $10,000. They have a chance to win 10 grand. Right. Okay? I was going to ask Bill, you about Bill, that. That was a tour, the Love Your, Love Your Curves tour. Well, what, what, what's that about? Love Your Curves tour was first, but Finding Ashley Stewart, that's the, that's the tour that took us to King's Theater in Flatbush. Mm. You know? And at the time, it was, it was kind of my idea and one of the producers' idea to go to King's Theater. Uh, at that time, I think it was the opening year, and we, were, we didn't have anywhere. We were already looking for venues, and we just said, you know what? We, we don't have a store in that neighborhood, but we're going to do a concert in that neighborhood. You know? We bought Boris Cujo, Mark Moriel, Dottavio Samuels, Faith Evans, um, SWV, Salt and Pepper. What brand uh, is doing that? Word. Word. You know, and also give scholarships. We have a scholarship program where we donate scholarships. Last year, we donated up to $500,000 in scholarships. Mega Evers, Rutgers, all historically black colleges outside of New York. Who's doing that? And you, and you, um, you uh you handle events pretty much, right? That events is your is part of part of part of what you part do. of my area. We have an events manager. Shout out to Gigi. I know everybody's watching. Um, but you know, my job on the on the events team is you know the 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 production of the fashion side, the fashion expertise. You know how to wear Ashley Stewart, head to toe look. You know, uh, these girls, they want to walk. They want to be a model. They want to be an influencer. So my job is to show them how to put that package together. Mm, mm, I got you. Do, you. do you guys have, like, I know, I mean, like I said, I don't know. I'm asking as a guy, probably, maybe it might be ignorant, but you guys have, like, a fashion show. I always hear about this fashion week this and fashion week that. Are you guys involved? So we, 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 we partake in different um, events and things like that, but for the, for the most part, finding Ashley Stewart and our in-store events, 
just like how the black community promotes themselves, that's what we do. We promote God. ourselves. God. We are our best promoters. You know, we're the underdog. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're, you, th you, think so? you, you, you think so? You think so? Ashley Stewart, like I said, it's like that's one of those brands we, that let me, stick let me, out. Let me, let, me, let me correct that. We were the underdog. Okay. But at, we grew, we came out of that, 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 Oh, I, I'm not shopping there. You know what I'm saying? We came right. out of that right. because sisters, sisters, and people are realizing you're getting, you're becoming older. You're getting, a, you're getting to be an adult, and you have bills to pay. You know, you can't live that fake dream of trying to act like Louis Prada, Gucci, pop them tags, and you got bills to pay. And these kids getting bigger and bigger. And that's your priority. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, our job is to help fund that for her keep her looking fashionably fly her job is to maintain the physical aspect of herself but we provide the fashion for her and then in the middle of that we'll we'll give her an engaging conversation on social media where she can tune into us weekly and see our social media calendar of different events that we have going on talk you know ways to win a hundred dollar gift cards we're constantly talking to this girl you understand we're, we're very engaged with her and you know we care about her we she comes to ashley stewart for her as her happy place and she really she doesn't have time to really be emotionally stressed with all of the problems that's going on because she's the head of household regardless of how we look at it you understand what mm. i'm saying she she's cooking she's cleaning she's raising them kids she's doing hair whatever it is she's doing right. she's she's becoming an entrepreneur she's you know and we all know that black women always have a, a, a new gig that they're doing or a new business that a venture that they're doing okay you, you so, first example busy exactly so you know i'm talking about the sisters that you know for example you have uh these women that are doing all these different hair care lines and things like that what we do when we have our events we provide space for them in our stores for free for them to advertise their business wow Wow. Okay, and it's, and it's on purpose because she's already supported us. Wow. She's already, she's already, you know, spent her monies in our business. Now it's time for us to help her have a space. Wow, I love that's it. That's what we do for our customer. I love it. I love it. That that's yeah. that's amazing. Um, Thank you. I want I want I got two things I want to ask you. I know Instagram gets kind of rude once it gets to the, we got probably about five six minutes left, but um. One, I mean, I, you, I can't even really ask you this. You answered this baby all over this whole conversation, but give, give the women, girls coming up, any type of inspiration. I think you're an inspiration to them, but you can give, you. if you can give them some words of encouragement or whatever. Ladies, listen to me, okay? Study your craft, all right? But study what's for you, not for what's for her and you like what she do and you want to, you know, do what she do and compete with her. Do what's for you because it's already written for what's for you you're going to get what's for you okay that's how i do what i do i stay in my lane i do what i'm great at i don't overstep and i'm stay consistent okay i don't burn any bridges and i right now in this chat room is people from my my childhood you understand what i'm saying my manager things like that people who have supported me you want to make sure that you stay grounded and you stay professional and you want to, you always keep your contacts and network. Wow. That's, that's definitely, that's definitely, uh, sounds like some facts of life right there. Yes. <laughs> we, we def, we, we're definitely proud of you. And, uh, Thank we, you. we definitely appreciate you. Uh, Thank flat, you. which is a whole, I, I'm proud of y'all too. I love this page. Thank you. Thank you. We're doing a good job. <laughs> y'all doing a good job. Uh, it is lit, we, okay. We work it, we work it. We, we, um, the, the COVID thing slowed things down. A couple of my one of my partners, he's out there fighting the good fight. Big shout out to yes. my partners. Um, these things kind of slowed it down, but it was able for us to open up these type of conversations just with people from Flatbush that, that have done different things and that have excelled and are a testimony to other people, you know, that are following our footsteps, you know. Yeah, and, and people need to know that, you know, I'm from there, like I said, never give up, man. I, I used to sit and, and ponder about, you know, just having everything because my mother couldn't provide. So I said, you know what? <laughs> I got to travel for free. I need to work in fashion. I put it in the universe. It's, I believed in that from a young age. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I just feel that... um if people practice what we preach as far as giving advice and all these life life talks that we have 
you know, when we're high and drunk and all of that, you know, take that, retain that, take that information and commit it to your memory because, you know, you never know who you ciphering with, who you parring with, who you sitting down and you just never know. Next thing you know, you're going to see him or her like, oh, I know him. You, you don't, you don't really know him. You sat with him for a minute. But if you took what he said to, or she said to you and ran with it, then, you know. Talk about it. Talk about it. Well, yeah, definitely. Like I said, I appreciate you. You want to shout out maybe your team, some of your peoples? Yes. I got to shout out STP Ace because he just joined in. I got to shout out um, Dika. I got to shout out Darnell, my sisters, Rolanda, everybody, my cousin. Damn, the whole Grenadian posse, Wagwan. Uh, <laughs> you know how we do. Definitely. Oh my goodness! Wait, I, my, all my cousins, all my cousins, everybody's in here. I'm just now looking at this. Yes. Oh my god. Well, you know what? I just want to shout out everybody. My girl Nicole, she's from Oakland. I got friends all over the world. I'm sure. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I represent everybody. You know what I'm saying? So it's like once I left Flatbush, it wasn't, it wasn't just leave Flatbush. It's like where, did, where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn. I'm, I'm from Flatbush, the county of kings. I'm like, I'm like that too. I don't, I don't even say, <laughs> I don't even say New York. I could be in Rio. I could be anywhere. You ask me where I'm from. I'm from Flatbush. Mm -hmm. Go, go Google it. Yeah. If you Google don't know. It. Yes. yes. And Google the notables from there. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I, well, I, I definitely appreciate you chopping it up with us. Um, I think you definitely. Yes, um, you. I think you're gonna enlighten a lot of people with this conversation. I hope so. Yes. You definitely enlighten sure, me. Yes, make sure everybody follows Ashley Stewart all day, every day. You want to find out questions? Hit me up at I am Tamara Ivy. Any questions? I'm here for you guys. I answer my DMs, all of that. You know, so you know any questions you may have. If you need help with some outreach for your daughters. I have access to that. Yes. You know, if you want to become a plus size model, I have access to that. You know, a, a lot of different things. You know, I have a lot of, you know, friends and, you know, that's it. You just have to network and not rely on the person to do it for you. You got to do the work. Yeah. We appreciate you. Love is love, sis. Talk to you soon. All right. Later. Later. Bye.